At Corpus Christi Catholic College, in Leeds, in the United Kingdom, a teenager, 15 years old, winked at a friend as he walked over to the Spanish teacher's desk, and then, he stabbed her seven times, and returned to his seat, like as if nothing happened at all. The teacher was a beloved teacher, named Anne McGuire. After 41 years teaching Spanish, Anne, 61, was just months away from retiring. She'd be free to spend more time with her beloved husband of 37 years, Don, their adult daughters Carrie and Emma, and nephews Daniel and Andrew who the couple had raised after Anne's sister had passed away from cancer. Loved by both her students and colleagues, with many describing her as the mother of the school, it was no surprise that Anne was heading in on her day off. It was coming up to exam time for her year 11 students, and she wanted to help them with some revision work. What Anne didn't know was that 15-year-old student, Will Gornick, had decided this was the day that he would take her life. For the past three years, Will had been brewing an irrational hatred for his teacher. Despite being a solid student, who was rarely in trouble, Will told his parents he hated Spanish class and could not stand Mrs. McGuire. His anger only grew stronger after Anne gave him detention, for skipping his homework. One day, Will sent a text message to a friend, saying the teacher, deserved more than death, more than pain, and more than torture. As long as she is alive, I will be depressed, sad and angry, so there's only one thing to do, he wrote. Will even told friends, that after killing Mrs. McGuire, he would claim to hear voices, so he would be given comfy walls in a psychiatric facility instead of going to prison. That way, he said, he would never have to worry about making money or life ever again. Will was known to be a little bit of a loner and a little odd. Will's friends thought he was only venting a little. But on that Monday when Anne came in on her day off, Will brought with him a kitchen knife in his backpack to school. Will bragged to fellow students that he was going to stop Mrs. McGuire before moving on to two other teachers, Andrew Kellett and Janae Miley, who was pregnant at the time, to keep her unborn child. He even showed three students the knife, as well as a bottle of Jack Daniels, that he was planning to drink in celebration of the murders. Nobody took him seriously. They all thought it was just Will being Will. During third period Spanish, Will took the knife from his bag and stood up from his desk. He turned and smiled, winked at the student next to him, then walked into the adjoining classroom where Anne was. Anne was leaning over a desk, helping a student, while Will approached from behind and repeatedly plunged the knife into her back. The third pl sliced through Anne's jugular vein, and while students screamed in terror, Anne ran, grabbing her neck as Will followed close behind. From the office next door, teacher Susan Francis heard the screams, and was running to see what was going on, and then Anne stumbled through the door, and collapsed in her arms. In a gasp, Anne said, he stabbed me in the neck, I'm dying. Susan managed to slam the door shut, and locked them inside, just seconds before Will showed up at the door. Susan just looked at him, through the glass in the door. He just stood looking at me, she said. I just remember his face having no emotion. Like a mask. Holding Anne close, Susan noticed cuts in her jumper and a huge amount of blood, coming from her neck. Meanwhile, Will, walked back into his classroom. Good times, he said, before calmly sitting down at his desk and waiting for the police to arrive. The school principal called Don, Anne's husband, and he rushed to the hospital. When he saw the police, he realized that things were serious. They took me to the emergency room, and Anne was there surrounded by people, 
Don remembered tearfully. There was blood everywhere. After suffering seven wounds, one punching through from the back to the front, and passed away. The police came in and arrested Will, with no confrontations. During a psychological assessment, doctors saw through Will's claim of hearing voices, but said that he displayed definite psychopathic tendencies. In November 2014, as he pleaded guilty to murder, Leeds Crown Court heard that he had never expressed any remorse, and told doctors at one point that he was proud of the attack. In my eyes, everything I've done is fine and dandy. The boy can now be named after the judge lifted reporting restrictions that had banned his identification, given the serious nature of the admitted crime. After sentencing him to a minimum of 20 years in prison, Mr. Justice Carlson said the arguments for naming the boy were finally balanced, but ruled, there's a public interest in naming a defendant who has been convicted of murder. The judge imposed an indeterminate sentence, saying Gornick was highly dangerous and may well never be released, after psychiatrists warned he had psychopathic elements to his personality and could kill again. Leeds Crown Court heard that he hoped to kill two other teachers, including one who was pregnant. He told doctors his plan was to stick her in the stomach to kill her unborn child. Don, Anne's husband, and their two daughters, Emma and Carrie, were also in court. In a victim impact statement, Don, a former maths teacher turned gardener, said Cornick's callous cruelty defies comprehension. In a reference to the reduced sentence Cornick received because he is under 18, Don McGuire wrote, we shall never know why, but if age bars the full responsibility, who owns the missing part? Cornick's personality seemed to change after he was diagnosed with diabetes, following a collapse, on a family holiday in Cornwall. He began to harbor a deep-seated and irrational hatred for Anne McGuire, who had taught him Spanish since year seven. In Facebook messages to a friend at Christmas, he talked of brutally killing McGuire and spending the rest of his life in jail, so he would not have to worry about life or money. Some of the children who witnessed the murder, later paid tribute to McGuire, who the judge said was, genuinely loved by her pupils. In police video interviews played to court, one pupil describes her as, really caring, she sort of couldn't do enough for people, she was just really lovely to everybody. Another described her as more of a friend than a teacher. She spent her whole 40-year teaching career at Corpus Christi and was due to retire that summer. Thousands of pupils, past and present, filled Leeds Town Hall for her memorial service. Her husband added that a courtroom verdict could never be enough. We shall be left with anniversaries of sadness. There will be no closure. Balance will not return. No level scales. No end. On November the 14th, 2017, the father of the teenager, who took teacher, Anne McGuire's life, said his son, very much regrets what he did, and is desperate to find a route to get better. A statement by Ian Cornick was read out at the inquest into the death of Mrs. McGuire, who was stabbed by his son, Will Cornick, at Corpus Christi Catholic School, in Leeds. Mr. Cornick said he tries to visit his son in prison once a month. I find that he is scared, and feels isolated in prison. He has told me that he very much regrets what he did, and is desperate to find a route to get better, Ian Cornick, father of Will Cornick, said. Mr. Cornick said that his son, struggles to express his emotions, and only really trusts his family. He said he has repeatedly gone over the events of April 28, 2014, when his son was 15, and said, I cannot point to anything that could have forewarned anybody of what was to happen. He added, there was simply nothing I could point to in Will's demeanor prior to that Monday which helps me understand in any way what happened. Mr. Cornick, who is divorced from his son's mother, Michelle Lee Beater, said he spent the weekend immediately before the tragedy on the Monday morning with his son and said it was exceptionally ordinary and unremarkable. 
Mr. Gornick said his son did play violent video games, like his older brother but he said, both knew the difference between fantasy and reality. He said he believes his son's personality changed after he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes in 2010. He said will became more introverted after that news. Both Gornick's parents talked about a meeting they attended at school after he had got into trouble for missing a detention and had told them how much he disliked doing Spanish. They said his relationship with Mrs. McGuire had broken down. Mrs. Lee Beater said that the school gave her son an internal exclusion but they asked for him not to be left alone due to his type 1 diabetes. They also asked that Mrs. McGuire was not left to discuss anything with him alone as the relationship was bad. She said in her statement that, at one point, her son told her, I can't stand Mrs. McGuire. And she recorded this in her diary. Mrs. Lee Beater said she was concerned that her son was not getting access to the treatment he needs due to his Category A prisoner status. Detective Superintendent Nick Wallen, from West Yorkshire Police, told Wakefield Coroner's Court, that Cornick had shown no remorse, during his officer's dealings with him. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy these videos, drop a like in there too. Thanks for watching, and if you would like to see a certain video on something, leave it in a comment below. Until next time, stay safe.